Um, my name is Megan DeArmond. I'm excited to be here to talk with folks about citation management and using EndNote. This webinar is geared towards those new to EndNote and um, beginner level and EndNote. However, I did get a few um, preliminary questions before I had finished putting my presentation together and I'm hoping to cover those questions in my talk. I tried to work them in, but um, since I didn't directly communicate with those that asked the questions, um, hopefully my interpretation <laughs> was correct. All right, so thank you for attending today and a special thank you to Katie Hoskins, Joanne Muhlenbach and Kyle Robinson with the Library at California Health Sciences University for organizing the scholarly snippet series. I personally am a fan of the series and happy to be part of it as well. Um, as I mentioned, the topic to, for today is in note. The version I'm currently using is X9 or 19 more specifically 9.3. Um, I realize that some of you may have EndNote 20, which was released, um, I think in 2020 or 2021, and is the most current version. So I will touch a little bit on um, the different versions shortly. All right, um, about this workshop, the scholarly snippet series are designed to help advance research skills and support scholarly activities. The series is organized and taught by librarians at osteopathic medical schools. Ooh, ooh. Um, the objective of today's webinar is to learn about EndNote um, and some of the basics of using EndNote, why it can ultimately save time and help with organizing references and aid in doing research. Um, the questions, um, requests that I had mentioned prior to the workshop that I will touch on included um, covering a little bit on the browser-based EndNote, covering some on export styles, um, exporting references that include the abstract, and sharing references and PDFs. Um, and I, I'll talk a little bit about how I do that, but it may not be what the person asking was looking for, so we'll talk about that. Um, Let's see. And then Katie is going to be um, launching a poll for attendees. Hopefully your poll popped up on your screen. Um, so I'm going to pause here just a moment for folks to fill out the poll. Okay, so it looks like our poll has um, ended. So I will move on to the next slide. So EndNote, what is EndNote? Or wait, let me just check in really quickly with Katie. What did you um, want to share anything about the poll or are we sharing <laughs> it information? Is, it is mostly librarians, but there are happy to see that there is also a faculty, staff and student also joining us today. Okay, fantastic. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so EndNote is a commercial product known for, as a citation management software, also called reference management software and uh, bibliographic management software. Other citation software you may have heard of or be familiar with are Zotero, RefWorks, Mendeley, and SciWheel. This type of software is primarily used to manage bibliographies and references when conducting research, writing reports and articles, and much more. It can be used to organize a project and or work with a team, which is primarily how I use EndNote. Um, a general note about citation software, there is a learning curve. It, I have not found it to be intuitive, but once you learn it, other software is easier to grasp. And I will say that I've been um, using EndNote off and on for a few years now, and I'm still learning lots of new things I can do with EndNote. Um, I have teams that work in different software, so I do bounce across um, different software for citation management, so I don't strictly use EndNote. Um, I do want to mention um, on that note that um, the author that I have up here on the screen, I don't know how to say his name, I think it's Wicker Bramer. Um, he's published many articles with steps and tools on using EndNote that are much more advanced and sophisticated, many of them 
deal with stages of systematic review processes. And I recently tried or, or experimented with one of his methods for reference chaining using Scopus and it worked out really well. Um, I've also uh, found some other resources that I may end up using instead, but um, I wanted to just mention that there are lots of resources out there one of the many wonderful things about librarianship is the willingness for folks to support each other. There are lots of libguides out there with great information on EndNote, as well as EndNote's support and YouTube channel. And um, of course, uh, our own library and research colleagues can also be of great help. Um, I definitely learn from the questions that come to me about using the software. And I appreciate that because it, it makes me think of the um, uses of it and challenges me to figure things out. So um, I have also relied on a colleague of mine at an institution close by. Her institution strictly uses EndNote, and she definitely has a much more um, in-depth skill set with it. So I often go to her for questions. So just to plug, there's lots of ways to get help with citation software. EndNote launched in 1989 and is currently a product of Clarivate. Prior to Clarivate, it was Thomson Reuters. I don't know who owned it in 89, probably neither of them or what that transition is, but I mentioned the launch date primarily because there are features of the interface that have definitely carried over from this history, at least in my humble opinion, like some of the language and um, the icons look very old <laughs> to me, but they just still work well. So I'm sure um, someone who had started with EndNote decades ago probably um, would recognize that maybe how those have transitioned over time. Again, the current in version of EndNote is 20. There are versions available for Windows, Mac OS, and an online browser-based version. I am most familiar with the EndNote for Windows version. My um, work computer is a Windows, and that's what I use EndNote on. I have used the browser-based version, and I will be talking a little bit about that. Um, I work on projects with students who have the Mac OS version, so I've seen that interface and am a little bit familiar with the interface of that as well and have had no problems guiding students through using it with that. I mentioned the version I have is X9. The most current version again is 20 or 20.2.1. 20 if you have EndNote X9.2 or earlier, you can convert your library to X9.3 or later. However, new versions are not backward compatible, but I'm not sure um, why you would want to go backward compatible, but um, just a side note. Okay, um, hold on here. All right, so the basics of EndNote. I may, I believe I mentioned the word library. This is a key term in using EndNote and one of the most important elements to understand. EndNote groups citations into a library or libraries. The library has the file extension .enl. You can, if you have the desktop version of EndNote, not the free online browser version only, you can have multiple libraries. You can, I think, have as many libraries um, as you want. Um, there are different takes on this approach. So um, many, much of the documentation recommends just having one library and then multiple group sets. The libraries get automatically saved to your um, My Documents folder. You could change that location, but that's typically where they go, not always. And then in addition to that library file, the ENL, there's a data folder that, um, that also gets saved that ends in dot data. <laughs> um, you can create as many EndNote libraries as you want with the desktop version, but not the online version. However, you can only really sync and share one online library. Um, you could, you can share the desktop.enl file, um, but not online. Uh -huh. So you could give that file, um, you know, uh, pass that file to someone if you wanted to share your library in another way, or you needed to share multiple separate libraries. You can, however, share multiple group sets online. Um, 
So this part, that part of EndNote I have found can be a little bit confusing to users and um, can it seems to be something more unique to EndNote. Um, a lot of the other citation software I've used is primarily browser-based where this has multiple options and then different restrictions depending on how you go about using it. So EndNote suggests using only one library and then having those um, different group sets so that it's available on any computer, on an iPad or online, um, you can access it at any time. Um, one thing I do want to note is that EndNote libraries should not be used or saved to cloud-based um, storage. So you don't want to sync it to your OneDrive, to Dropbox, to iCloud, Box, anything like that. Um, it over time, it can corrupt the library, which would be really devastating. <laughs> I would be really upset if that happened. So I um, just wanted to mention that and um, make folks aware of that if they weren't aware already. Okay, so the online version um, can be found at myendnoteweb.com or at this link I have here. And then I also link to a quick online reference guide that's pretty short, but gives some really important notes about the online version. It is, as I mentioned, accessible anywhere, anytime, not just on your work computer. I currently do not use that version regularly. I use the desktop version and I pretty much only access it on my work desktop computer. Um, but I do have um, the online, an online account and I use that online account to have um, students share groups with me so I can help them with their projects. The online account, if you only have that free version, it's, um, EndNote calls that a uh, basic version. There are only 21 reference styles in that online version. It can only store up to 50,000 references, which for some may seem like a lot, but um, for me, I'm, I work on lots of systematic review projects and that would not be enough for me. Um, and then you can only store two gigs for file attachments. So if you are a user that likes to attach the PDFs to your references, you, you may want more than just that free version. If you um, were to use the online version only, again, you can only have one library. So your projects would, you would want to have your projects into groups or group sets. So I'm going to talk a little bit about groups. Um, and Basically, the groups allow a large library to be broken into subsets for later viewing. A group simply points to a subset of references that already exist in your library. So you could think of, um, like if you're working on a book, you could have um, one main group set for that book and then subgroups for chapter one and then the subtopics of chapter one and chapter two, that sort of thing. Or um, if you are a student, you may want to have groups for each of the courses that you're enrolled in or um, each of your research projects that you're working on. That's um, primarily what I do. I do group sets for each project that I'm working on in EndNote. Um, they do have something called a smart group, which I have not experimented with. I think as a librarian, I'm hesitant <laughs> to do this, um, where EndNote would automatically search and place future and existing references based on search criteria. I am gonna demonstrate searching in EndNote, but I will say that that is not something I regularly practice. I think as a librarian, I'm it's much more, um, my skill set is much stronger going directly to the database downloading an RIS or InBib file if I'm in PubMed and uploading those files into EndNote rather than directly searching in EndNote, but I'm just gonna show that really quickly. Um, and hopefully that may be a value to the faculty, staff, students, and librarians that are here. Um, something that you can show users how to do as well. Okay, so I think um, I'll talk just so I had a few more slides I was going to run through with the groups and how to do that. Those are my instructions I put in there, but I'll demonstrate that. And then I will also demonstrate in just a moment how to add the PDF articles. Um, one thing that I don't know for certain is if you can, when you share a set of references, if you can share the PDF. 
But if you're just sharing a group, but if you share an entire library, you definitely would be sharing the PDF. So in that case, if you if you that's important for the project and you have EndNote desktop, then I would share, I would create a separate library for that project and share the entire library. Um, but really that's um, up to you and your the project that you're working on. Okay, so let's get EndNote open here. Um, is everyone seeing EndNote, I hope? All right, so I um, wanted to just show you, I had created a group already for our scholarly snippets demo here. And then um, the group, so if you wanna create a group set, you would go there and you can see it started a new group set. And then um, if you, we could just leave it new group set. And then if I'm clicked on new group set and then I choose create group it you can see that I, now i have a subtopic so this new group set could be um your um book i don't know if i'll ever get to writing a book <laughs> maybe um and then you could have your subgroup chapter one and then your subtopics beneath that so i think the um sectioning for the um groups is an important feature so that all your references aren't just in one big lump. <laughs> um, so you can see what you have there. And then to um, do an online search in EndNote, I'm just gonna show this again, this is not something I regularly practice, but I feel like it could be helpful to those whose EndNote is connected directly to their library resources. My EndNote is not directed, uh, directly connected. Our institution is not currently supporting EndNote at this time. So um, um, I'm, I'm gonna demo using PubMed. So I'm selecting PubMed there. And then you'll see that it, um, if this wasn't open already, I would open this online search group and show some free resources here. And you can see PubMed is selected. I'm going to search for a particular title and see if and note can find um, an article. So it may be a colleague suggests or a researcher is looking for a specific title or you are looking for a title, it's found this title. Um, I pasted it there and adjusted the search parameter to title. And then depending on your internet connection, um, this can happen quickly or it might take a minute or two. So it found that article. And you can see that it um, does not have a PDF attached here. There's no PDFs attached to this reference. Um, I don't know how well you can see this icon on the screen, but it, um, this is the find full text, which if you hover over it, it indicates that, but you might not recognize that right away. So um, if you click there, it will search for that. Oops, sorry, I don't know if you heard that sound. Um, I got impatient. Um, then it, you can see here, ah, I'm impatient with EndNote, apologies. <laughs> it should be there now. Okay, so the PDF has uploaded to EndNote now, and usually this paperclip icon shows um, more like it's not as grayed out but so you can see the pdf is now uploaded there so then i just want to show um quickly that you can do um uh keyword searching um whoops also and in note um i'll do all fields i'm going to do osteopathic Medicine. I just realized where, um, okay, so this shows that there are 720 results that it's picking up. I don't want to download that many right now for the demo, so I'm just going to do the first 20 and give that a second. I just realized it's already 1121 and I have a few more things I want to go over, so I hope um, folks can stay for that time period. Um, I will try to be brief. You could um, select all, or you could select a few of these and then add those directly to your um, group there. So you can see that added those four articles 
um, right into my project. I never left the EndNote software. I feel like this can be helpful for researchers or students that or um, librarians when you're just starting on a project and you're just kind of exploring what's out there. It's a good way to do that. But um, if you don't end up doing the search directly in EndNote, finding those PDFs is definitely helpful. I use it primarily to locate open access PDFs are available. Um, you can, I just saw a question in the chat, you can connect to institutional full text. Again, my institution does not do that, but um, this online search, there are um, options here to um, find your local institution. Yeah, so you can see here like Florida State, I don't know how um, Purdue is in here, but I don't know if your institution is listed in there. If it is, that's that would be one way to do it. Um, the only other thing I know is to um, contact EndNote support if you're trying to get that connection. Again, my institution doesn't support EndNote, so I don't, I don't have experience with that, but that would be the place to look first is in that um, kind of magnifier with the globe for the online search so that it's searching your institution. Um, okay, so the, I did have a question um, that came in prior that asked about exporting abstracts. That for me is, I set in the database that I'm searching in when I export the RIS file to make sure that it comes through. Um, the other thing I just wanted to cover really quickly was the um, exporting references. So if you um, go to export, I would um, rename the file and then you can choose, I usually leave it at um, text file. So if I'm doing, uh, the most common thing I do is export some, uh, EndNote set of references as tab delimited so that I can import it into Excel. And then I clean the Excel file for my research teams doing systematic reviews for their screening. That's my main export use. I also export sets of references to share as an RIS file. So that's another option that you can use this RIS export. Um, those are the main two ways I export. Um, I will note that EndNote had, I was in preparation for um, this workshop today, I did notice that EndNote has a new style for tab delimited and it works way better than it used to. I did do another method of getting it out of EndNote and into Excel, but it was much more, it would take me <laughs> at least 20 minutes to demo that. Um, and this works really well. So um, I'm gonna just uh, stop there since I'm already um, over my time, but I hope that um, what I've shared today helps you and inspires you to get started with EndNote and um, using it. It's a very robust citation management software. It's, um, I found it a little bit harder to use um, than other software when I first started with reference management. Um, so there is an evaluation for today's talk that I believe is being put in the chat. And then I just wanted to mention that there, the next scholarly snippet workshop is on May 5th from 9 to 9.30 a.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time, and it's on confidence intervals, p-values, um, and you can register for that on the California Health Sciences Library's website, which is also in there. The presentation template is from Slides Carnival, and the photos I used were from Unsplash, and thank you for attending and um, hearing a little bit about EndNote.